Hey guys, Max here, back again with another Arduino video tutorial. This time we're going to make an Arduino based all-terrain obstacle avoiding RC rover controlled through a homemade radio transmitter and receiver. You can check out that video up there before making this. So without further ado, let me show you how to build this massive RC rover. Let's get started. So just before we make the car itself, let me introduce its main parts. This is my homemade 7 channel receiver, H-bridge motor driver, ultrasonic sensor, geared motors, 9 gram servo motor, toggle switch, buzzer, lithium ion batteries, BMS board, and 4 regular wheels. Additionally, we have a JST connector pair and a homemade MOSFET switching circuit, bicycle tire tube rubber, sour cream container lids, 4mm plywood, and poster board foam. First, let's make the rover's large wheels. When slipping these plastic lids over the rims of the wheel, be sure there's a nice tight fit. Repeat this same step with the other three wheels. Then taking a measurement of each of the new rims, cut some strips of foam that will wrap around. Once you've glued this strip of foam onto the rims of the first wheel, it should look sort of like this. Then do the same for the other three wheels. From some bicycle tube rubber, we're going to cut a handful of tire tread pieces and glue them onto the wheels. Once you're done gluing them all on, the tires should look like this. And I really admire the zebra look to them. It's so cool. Next, we're gonna make the body of the rover from some 5mm plywood. Check the description below to download the blueprints slash templates. So here I just cut out the base of the rover. And as I've already left some templates for you to download, all you have to do is print all the sheets out and glue them onto some plywood and then cut them out from there. You don't have to trace any of the parts as I'm doing here. At this point you can already start fitting in certain components into their places in the plywood such as the headlights, buzzer, on off switch and charging port.
Once you've cut out all of the corresponding pieces for the top part of the rover, you can glue them together creating the lid of the rover. This is something you'll be able to screw on and unscrew when you need to access the inside. The next step will be wiring for the electronics. Hook up the motor driver to your homemade radio frequency receiver. Once that's done, let's make the Rover's 3-cell 12-volt battery. It'll consist of three of these 18650 type 3.7-volt batteries. Also, each one is rated at 2600 milliamp hours. Once you've got a positive and a negative wire sticking out and a couple of in-between connections, solder those four to the BMS or battery management system. After insulating the battery well in the DIY way, it should look something like this. Over here we'll wire up the receiver to the power supply control side of things, which includes wiring the two-way SPDT switch with the DC jack and female connector. Also let's add a diode for the current to flow in one way. This one's just for charging. When I turn the circuit on, you can see only the Arduino turns on. That's because we haven't added a jumper connector powering the motor driver as well. This position is for charging, the middle position is off, and the other position is to turn the rover on. So next we'll add wires to the headlights and horn of the rover. Then we're going to wire the headlights and buzzer to the receiver, though the headlights need to be connected with this MOSFET driver, or electronic switch which is toggled by the Arduino. Additionally, wire a 9 gram servo motor to the receiver and an ultrasonic sensor. Now it's time to secure everything down onto the base. Once everything's fixated to the board, let's not forget to connect up the motors to the driver. Glue the front, back, and side panels to the base of the rover. So when I tried to turn the rover on with the current battery, I could see that it didn't want to since the BMS has a cutoff feature when the voltage gets too low or drops, it suddenly doesn't allow current to flow out anymore. So I rewired it in a way where it'll always allow me to have it running. To keep the wiring organized within the rover, staple all the wires down onto the board, specifically ones that seem to stick up a lot. Secure the battery onto the base with some bolts, washers, and a piece of cardboard across it. Drilling a hole for the antenna to peek through on the lid of the rover allows me to slide the whole lid on without anything getting in the way. Slide in the servo motor to its appropriate spot and attach on the ultrasonic sensor, and then bolt everything into place. Finally, it's time to attach the wheels. What makes them sit really secure on the ends of the motors are these bolts that I'm putting through. After coming back from a little trip to the highway, I decided to glue on one of these road studs which I found onto my rover. I also modified my Arduino based transmitter with some toggle switches and buttons. These will now come in handy to toggle for the rover's features. So now we have finished making the rover, it's time to do some programming. Hook up your homemade transmitter to your PC, open up the two codes which I've left links to in the description down below, you can download them, check you have the right board parameters selected, and the correct pinouts defined, and then upload the code. Do the same thing for the receiver except make sure you select the receiver code and then check you have to find all the pins correctly according to your hardware. Hit the upload button and once that's done you should be ready to rock and roll.
switching the transmitter and rover on, there isn't any kind of special pairing involved. They automatically connect to each other, allowing you to get straight into action. The left joystick on the transmitter makes the rover move forwards and backwards, and the right joystick makes the rover turn. Though to make a proper turn, it's best to combine the movement of both joysticks. Oh yeah, and the toggle switch on the left hand side of the transmitter toggles the headlights of the rover on and off. So to clarify the features and ports on the back of the rover, you got the programming port, charging port, and the switch which can either be off, on, or on charging mode. Alright everyone, to wrap things up, this rover has been a lot of fun to build and especially to test run through grass, gravel and any other kind of rough terrain and even rather large rocks It does pretty well running over. And I know I didn't manage to get the following features working on this rover, the obstacle avoidance and the horn right here since it's been taking more than a week for me to code. So I'll make a separate video about that in the future when I've successfully coded for those features and you should see this rover in action avoiding obstacles. If you guys enjoyed watching this video then don't forget to hit that like button share this video with your friends subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below if you want to financially donate towards my work I would much appreciate if you donate to my Bitcoin wallet I've left a link in the description below to where you can donate to thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon peace